Hello, I'm Joseph, and today is going to be probably the first in a series of devlogs because it looks like this is going to take a while for me to kind of get this out the door, and that is Rayla PHP's uh, bindings. Um, I'm doing a couple of other things with this, not just bindings themselves, because Raylib is a fairly low level kind of game library. You still have to do quite a bit of work just in order to make a game out of it. Um, so for this week, I have, uh, I don't know, not right there. I, I have fonts rendering. So you can already render fonts in Rayla PHP, but it was the, the built-in fonts. If you wanted to render any other type of font, you could not. So uh, for now, I have basic support for two type fonts. Um, this was already this is already in Raylib itself, but I had to create the bindings for it, uh, and I had a couple of struggles with that. So here's the, the kind of font. They give you different type of uh, texture filters. You can apply to fonts. So if you want them to kind of be a bit more blurry, so you can have you know scaled fonts without having to create all those different kind of variants of fonts you can or having to re-render them. And then there's the just the point versions of that. So if you want to have very pixelated fonts, you can definitely do that too. They, it's better for when it gets smaller versus the uh, bilinear stuff. Um, but when it gets bigger, then you probably want to go bilinear. Um, but yeah, that, that's just uh, the way that the fonts are, uh, how it's loaded. It's fairly simple. You just kind of toss in that, the, the font size you want it to render as, and it does the pre-compute uh, stuff for it. Um, and if you wanted to limit any type of font characters or uh, font counts, um, character counts, well, font counts, you could you could do that as well. Um, then with the after you kind of load up a font, you got to generate the bitmaps, which is what you are seeing there for kind of like zooming in and out and stuff like that, and then setting the default filter for it if you want. Um, this is going through the texture, and this is how another thing. So when I was while working on this, um, it gave me like all this gobbledygook of a font and then i figured out it was the default font and I'm, i was trying to figure out why and this is how to cause a whole nother rework of the stupid freaking c code i'm writing anyways but um every time i would reference texture i generate a like a brand new php object and just reference it to the uh internal texture that the font structure had for c code um which i thought was fine but then uh, as soon as you finish call calling the function on top of texture um, the texture PHP object would be dereferenced and then thus calling the deconstructor, which unloads the texture. And I, I thought long and hard, like, okay, maybe I should just have unload texture explicit every time. Um, but the problem with that is no one's going to remember to unload textures because they're writing in such a higher level um, program language that they're not going to just remember, like, oh, well, I have too many textures in my and my VRAM, I got to start unloading it. It's like, no, I mean, technically, if you're kind of done with your texture object, you're not going to have any other way to reference it. It should technically just unload. Um, so I wanted to keep it in the de deconstructor. That meant me going back into the C code here. Um, so if I look at Raylib, look up the font. Uh, where is that at? Okay, yeah. So in Raylib, uh, they have a uh, structured for the font, which is a 2D texture, um, and it's it's not pointed. It's not a pointer. It's actually inside the font uh, structure. So rather than me create uh, keep recreating these uh, these PHP objects, I had to. Oh, I'll do that. Uh, where's my font h file? Font.h. I had to adjust the object to always hold on to the texture zval, which if you know what a zval is in PHP, it's just like any generic. It's it's when you do like x equals 10 or x equals uh, simple XML or x equals some type of random PHP object. It literally means just like any kind of random uh, object there. It could be a hash. It could be uh, anything else like a hat. It could be a PHP array. Uh, it's, it's another word for hash. Um, so yeah, I had to go through that, and then I had to go through the constructors. Where is this at? Uh, construct the constructors and initialize the texture, and then uh, assign it from the internal font texture thing, my Bob. Um, so then it keeps it there, and every time I want to call the property of X, uh, so if I go down and reference my getters and setters for my properties, and let's say I want to reference the the texture. I had all this other code here to generate this uh, the texture, but now it's just referencing the object's texture that I have stored there. This means, though, that I got to go through all my other code that I have written like this 
and stop creating all these objects. So this is like, for example, if I want to get all my recs at, for all my rectangles for my character accounts and stuff like that, I got to go through uh, and store rectangle objects in PHP, uh, not in PHP, for, for the PHP code in C and keep them there until they're ready because these are stored uh, in there. So if not, then they get dereferenced and if I ever have any a deconstructor for the rectangle object, which I don't want at this time, um, then it doesn't help. For performance, anyways, it should make sense to store these in the in there, but it is going to create a memory issue in that every time you want to go through and create a font, you're going to have all these memory uh, references to uh, all these rectangles and all these and one texture, and then uh, the chart info is another one that has another thing to do with that uh, but fonts is not the only thing i'm doing this to i'm doing this to uh like the wave loading and stuff for sounds um so i, I gotta go through all that it's, it's gonna take a whole nother week and probably have like zero progress to really show for that but that's the bindings so beyond bindings i'm also putting kind of like a thin layer on top of raylib's uh kind of base functions and giving uh the the users or the, the programmers kind of more functionality at the gate uh, I showed this in another video, but that wasn't really referenced as a devlog, and that was like animation uh, support. So if you wanted to load up like a tile set and have an animated tile set for the player to like walk around and stuff with, um, there's there was an easy way to do that. Um, now I'm trying to make it even easier, extending upon that an animated tile set and having specific hooks into you know any type of what did I just do with that? Uh, any type of um, tile editor that you want to use. So here I have tiled and in here I'm I'm managing some animations for these. So I have my walk animation for north, west, east, I'm sorry, south, north, <laughs> south, west, east, and north. Um, the only caveat, and this is a limitation of tiled, is that the animations are linked to the specific tiles, even if the animations have nothing to do with the tile. So if you have more animations than tiles, you're kind of out of luck. You can't do that. Um, and there's no way to name these animations either. So it's just like reference ID tile one animation, and that will be the the walk animation. And for me, um, if I'm using a visual tool for this, tool for this, I don't want to be referencing like some obscured number uh, for the animation. And so for the tile, uh, what I end up doing, and it's going to be a hard requirement to reference the animations in the helper library they have, is that I, I, I gave a custom property and named it self. Well, I had named it self. I don't know what I just did with it. Okay. Um, so then it, when I parse this all out, I can see, okay, well, this tile has one it has one animation. It can only have one animation, and that one animation's name is self. So in my PHP code, when I parse uh, tiled, let me go back to my index here. So I take my, uh, my, my tile parser and parse the tile set. Um, I get the resulting tiled tile set. So this is different than a regular tile set because... Like I said, you can use any tile set editor you want. You just make a custom parser and custom tile um, tile set class that extends upon the already their like made tile set class that I made or object. Um, so yeah, I'm passing that in. I get it out, and then I pass that into my animated sprites, which take in a tile set. But in this instance, because it's tiled, uh, I, I have I've made a custom animated sprite for that because then it just reads it in, reads in the animations. And so I just pass in the tiled tile set where it's going to be rendered um, and then the animation to play. So it's set to, to east right now. So if I go ahead and play that, then you'll see that it plays the, the, the right animation. And the other thing is that there, you know, you can reference like south and this will jump into another aspect that I'm working on with the tiled parser. Um, is that it you know you see all these shapes pop up the the circle and ellipses are problematic right now i still got to fix that um but that is meant for a collision detection or just some way to reference type of shape within your sprite like if you want to do an attack animation you get that additional sprite to show or that that shape to show um so i have support for parsing that in and reading it and possibly rendering it if you want it to um and so that's what you see here again um the 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 thing that I 
kind of ran into this was that it plays the animation while you're trying to set up these collisions and i i don't know have a i don't know of a way to turn that off i couldn't find anything you click on these properties here and it doesn't seem to to do anything specific to that i think the properties are just specific to the um actual you know objects that you you add there um so they have uh kind of a rectangle a square an ellipse a point um triangle and the, really there's only like two shapes they support which is a polygon and an ellipse um everything else is like a triangle is a polygon with three points a, a square is just the object because the square itself let me go ahead and select this the square the square itself has actual width and height to it so every object has a width and height so it doesn't have any polygons or any ellipse to that but uh i i i know how to kind of like read the sand and figure out okay well this is a polygon this is a square this is a rectangle this is a circle um so i just got to fix the ellipses to see what's going on there okay um beyond all that um that's kind of where the tile is at uh in my other video that i have for kind of game state i talked about programming the game state as well um, the only addition to game state that i added that was a, a nice addition is that uh, if you ever wanted to share state between applications and if you don't know what this is go watch my other video that i called game state for raylib um, but it's it's a way to get different kind of uh, state to share between the the different applications you have so for example when we hit p it pauses um the uh, the main game, but gives the pause context in there, so then that rent that stops. But you saw like the 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 what's it called the um, the profiler still rendering, like it's still doing that. Um, it's still running, even though it was assigned to app. It's not, it's paused there, but it's not paused here, and it's the same information between the two. Um, and then the context that you would have for like moving your character around, I had it assigned to pause. So, you know, it's just a nice little addition that I have between that because if you wanted to share like networking between different states, maybe you're loading one level to the next or you're moving back to the home screen or something like that. Those will all be technically different applications with different uh, states that you have in there. Uh, so now that you can share that, that was pretty, pretty cool that I have there. Uh, I worked on another thing uh, called the main loop and I was going to make a video on it, but it's just not ready yet to kind of showcase uh, on it. Uh, and if you don't know what a kind of a main loop is, um, in Raylib you get one loop basically. They get, they they let you have you set a target frame per second. Uh, so where is it at here? Uh, like 60 frames per second. But if you want to run your update loop at like 30, or you want to run your physics at 120, um, you can't really have multiple loops per se unless you do threading, which Raylib doesn't even touch at this point. Um, PHP has some options for that, but you know, if you're just getting started out, that's that's a whole lot to take in. So I was trying to build out a custom main loop uh, that would do all these calculations and stuff like that, um, and try to fix some of the problems that I was seeing. This way, you can have multiple uh, loops as you want. And so this was kind of uh, kind of the how the API would be set up. You set up a main loop of the target FPS. Um, this would be like how fast you really want to run and then you'd set up a run with your custom loop that you run there but then you could specify like 60 run it at you know 60 hertz or run it at 120 hertz or whatever else it was um or maybe set up multiple loops and then assign it to a loop manager per se um and then it'll take the highest loop frame rate and work off of that um but uh yeah, I mean it's it's just not ready yet. It's not uh, it's not doing what I want it to do. Um, it, it does some things better than it does for the, the how frame rate is calculated for Raylib itself. Specifically, when you start to get into delta time um, that you use in animations and in physics and stuff like that. Um, so I I don't know if it was obvious, but like uh, delta time is pushed into uh, this. So I, when I press down, it kind of slows and speed timed up uh what's happening here okay i i don't even remember what the keys were assigned for this let me uh let me go back here so up and down okay so um if i press up it speeds it up so the animation goes faster 
And if I press down, then the animation goes slower. And that just that's timing within the application itself, so it affects all state um, that uses the delta time. So when you're doing like player animations and stuff like that, you want to use delta time. This way, it's like fluid and consistent. So if, if I drop like 30 frames, it doesn't like play super slowly. Or if I dropped, you know, uh, you know. So you're like you're running at 10 frames per second it would technically play at the same speed as it would be playing at 60 frames per second um but yeah that's basically it next week i'm hoping to kind of get some of the api kind of more up into shape get some of the more documentation on it something i noticed uh when i was trying to record this was that i don't have all my uh collision de detection uh stubs in so when i do collision uh, it only has Rex, Circle Rex, and so on. But I actually have all the collision detection implementation in there. Uh, it's just not in my stubs for auto complete and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try to go through some of my auto, uh, some of my stubs and other stuff like that, and get there. Uh, but you know, if you're interested, I'll put my link down for Raylib. Uh, I do have uh, two packages on on Packagist for so you can do compose and install. One for the helper, one for the stubs. Um, I, another thing that I uh, someone brought up and that I'm gonna um, be looking into is uh, disregard <laughs> wait tabs here. Uh, let me go to it. Uh, is PHP pickle? Uh, and if you don't know what pickle is, I think that's the name of the uh, the other one, which is P E C L. Uh, but it's a way to get the the Raylib extension to automatically compile on your computer. Um, so I, I need to look into package.xml for even getting my package onto PECL or Pickle uh, repository hosting. If not, then I got to figure out how to get this stuff to go. Um, this way, you know, if somebody wants to run it on Linux or stuff like that, they don't have to follow my guide. They can just use Pickle or PECL and install it that way, uh, which is a little bit more automatic than me, me depending on uh, some stuff to do. Um, but yeah, uh, this goes into a whole nother thing with, with PHP in itself. There's just no good ways to get extensions to automatically build and compile on all the platforms. So Windows, the biggest exception to that. PECL has been uh, kind of the biggest uh, driver for getting extensions to automatically compile and install for, for Linux and Mac. But for Windows, this has never been there. So this one called Pickle, which I, I'm, I'm assuming it's the same name as Pickle for the other one. Um, works on Windows as well, uses the Visual Studio compiler and stuff like that. Um, so I, I'm going to try to get a package for that set up, see if I need to apply for putting my package on PECL at all. Um, this way there's you can have builds and then getting um, DLLs onto there as well, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that, that's my plan for next week. There's a lot of work to still do um, and a lot of scope uh, to kind of plan out to for the next week's as well beyond that.